Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to show you how I have set up my little office space here and some of the things that I bought. So first of all, I want to thank you guys so much for the warm welcome back to YouTube. You guys were so generous and so welcoming and I really, really appreciated it. Um, I'm really excited to be back and I loved seeing all your messages and all your comments and yeah, and I don't know if you noticed, but we are very close to 10,000 subscribers. And I think what I'm gonna do for the 10,000 is I'm actually, instead of doing uh, my normal thing where I introduce new YouTubers, instead I'm going to do um, Pattern, pattern designers that maybe we don't know as well. So smaller pattern designers or um, just less known or newer pattern designers. So, oh, got dark all of a sudden. That's better. <laughs> so what I did was I put out a call on Instagram and on YouTube to see who are your favorite small pattern designers, people I may not have heard of. And I came up with a list of over 20 just from the suggestions. So what I think I'm gonna do is, is contact some of them and maybe do 10 patterns for my 10,000. And then I can, as we go forward, maybe do more. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Because I feel like if I do 20 or something crazy like that, then the pattern designers also get lost and they don't get to kind of get a nice little feature, which is what I like to do. So I think that's what I'm thinking of doing is, is reaching out and seeing if I can get 10 pattern designers to sponsor a giveaway. And that way you guys can try somebody new. So that will be coming up soon. I'm sitting here in the guest bedroom and it's the same place I recorded last time and I'll put in a little video now of how I've got this set up. So I did get a loner sewing machine. Yes, so I have a machine, it's a Singer. I haven't actually tried it yet because um, since I last saw you and up until today, we've had guests staying in this room and also I didn't have any scissors to cut fabric. <laughs> so I didn't really have the ability to sew, um, but I did get myself a pair of sewing scissors. Uh, I got them on Amazon. I've been supporting the local, um, here it's called a merceria, um, like a local little mini sewing store. And I have been buying a lot there, but uh, I got these pretty impressive sewing scissors that also came with a little pair of snips. So those just arrived this morning at Amazon. And uh, so I have a machine. I found it, I can use the serger in the little sewing store near me for five euros an hour. So. You know, I didn't have a serger up until, you know, a year ago, a year and a half ago. So I can sew without a serger. It is nice to have it once you've, you know, been using it, um, but I don't have to. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if maybe every once in a while I wanna go in and spend an hour and just serge a bunch of stuff, serge some edges before I sew. Maybe I'll get into that habit. I don't know. So I did start something new because I was going a little nuts not having anything to work on it. And so um, I went to the local uh, sewing shop, sewing knitting shop, and I found this um, wool. So it's Katya wool, which seems to be very popular here. It's, um, you know, like a big uh, yarn manufacturer. And this is sort of one of their specialty ones it's called Gobi Lace. And it's actually 73% um, 73, 73 virgin wool, 15% baby camel and 12% polyamide. Um, and it just feels amazing. And so this was half price. It was regularly 450 euro for 225 euro. So I started the Eze Shawl by Espace Tricot, and I'll put in a picture. Um, I just wanted a, a nice big wrap because it will get cold and it will get uh, damp here. And so I wanted something cozy. And this is really soft. It's very soft against the skin. It's taking more yarn than I thought, even though as far as I can tell, I'm making gauge. So. I don't, I don't know why. It does say this is lace weight and it feels pretty thick for me for lace weight. Um, anyway, it's taking me, I think, it was only supposed to take five balls and I think it's gonna take six, six and a bit probably. Um, but that's okay, I don't mind. And here is the shawl so far, that's the front. So there are seven panels and I have completed three and a half. So I'm basically exactly halfway through. It's a very easy knit. Um, and I've been knitting it a lot, <laughs> knitting on it a lot, as they say. Um, and it's just got rows of eyelets every eight inches. And then you're just going back and forth, knits and pearls, but it's gonna be nice and cozy when the time comes. It needs to get blocked out, because really, like right now, it's looking more like, a, like the width of a, a scarf rather than a, than a wrap. But I find, I think if I block it out, it's gonna be, yeah, I think it's gonna be lovely. So I've been working on that. And then I also got this great magazine called Mi Moda, My Fashion. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of those ones, you guys probably know, that's published in different countries under different 
um, under different titles, but I quite like this one. It's got some great modern patterns. I'm gonna do a flip through at the end. So if you wait till the end, I'm gonna do a flip through. Actually, you know what? I lie. <laughs> Uh, next video, I'm gonna do a flip through of four or five different Spanish pattern companies that I have, Patrones, um, maybe I'll do the Berta, I'll do this one, but let me give you a little preview. So I'm loving this little jacket, and they have a long version as well. Little dress is cute, and you know, like a, like a turtleneck made of blue clay. It's very cute, and there are these pants that have the elastic bottom and those are made of corduroy, nice high, high waistline. So a couple, couple shirts, nice basics. Like, oh, and this dress too, let me show you this dress. I thought that was really nice. I actually thought I might be able to use um, one of my Coca double gauzes for that. So I'll show you more of this next time, but um, I'm loving these. So these are like five euros, which is 750 Canadian, you know, six, I keep giving you guys the exchange rate. <laughs> so, there are, so there are those. And because I don't have any patterns with me, I probably will do that. And I don't have a printer here either. So I think for the moment, I'm gonna try and do a couple from these pattern magazines. And then I might do some sort of, you know, if you're in Spain and you know where you normally print off your patterns, that would be great to know as well. I know there's net printer and so I might just do an order with them, but for now I'm gonna try and use what I have. So the reason why I filmed today is I got a package this morning from Michelle from Simone's Rose. And if you guys remember, I did a two part interview with Michelle last year. And then I bought some fabric off of her um, when she was leaving to go back to Winnipeg. I think it was Winnipeg. Um, and everything that I made from her fabric this summer is the stuff that I've worn nonstop. And so I decided to do an order. So that's why when someone will say to me, why are you ordering fabric from Canada when there's lots of beautiful fabrics in Spain? It's just because I know how much I love her fabric. That said, I'm not gonna be doing it again, um, only because it was so darn expensive. Like, yeah. I, the, the, the shipping was really expensive because of just the weight of it. I mean, it was huge. Uh, and then the lady just delivered it and I had to pay an extra 33 euros in duty. <laughs> so basically it was like double the price of what the actual fabric was. That said, bygones be bygones. I've already bought it now. May as well enjoy it and, and, and enjoy the process. So first of all, it came in this beautiful, wrapped beautifully in, um, what do you, wax paper. When was the last time you saw wax paper? And it has, had a lovely tie on it. I'll put a picture of when it arrived. And then when I opened it, I thought, oh, I have to, I have to record so that you guys can see. So I haven't actually undone it yet. I just peeked in and look. Oops, Frida Kahlo, a lovely card um, from Michelle and it's tied with a pretty ribbon and the portion on the top that's tied with the ribbon is a present. This is not stuff that I, um, that I ordered. Michelle threw in a little present for me, which is so sweet. So I'll start with the present. You can see why this was so expensive, like, you know. But again, beautiful stuff is worth it and, uh, and I'm gonna enjoy it. So here is a very pretty piece of Japanese cotton, just a little remnant of Japanese cotton that I can use. Michelle knows me, she knows I love Japanese fabric, so I can, I, I'm assuming this is Japanese fabric, looking at it. I don't, I don't know 100%, but I'm pretty sure. Um, and yeah, because it's double gauze, so it's probably a coca double gauze. Um, and I can use this as a detail on thing, a pocket, whatever. I'm even thinking about getting back into quilting, because I, I don't want to, I want to use up all my ends, and I wonder if maybe I can, um, use all my little bits and bobs in a quilt. Okay, this is another one that uh, I didn't end up ordering. It was one of my options and I didn't, and she gave me a, she gave me a meter or so anyway. She's so, so sweet. And this is, oops, let's see if I can do that. This is a, a white with gray stripe pure linen. And it's lovely, <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Michelle, you spoil me, you spoil me. Um, yeah, so th that is so sweet of her to throw that in as a present. I really, really appreciate it. Um, everybody likes a surprise, right? I love a surprise. Okay, and then here are the three fabrics that I ordered, and I ordered them um, 
because of the beautiful things that she makes. So I will link below um, her beautiful um, designs using these fabrics and maybe I'll see if I, if they're still on the website, I'll put in a picture so you can see why I got them. So, oh, oh look, oh, oh look, it's, it's a blue stripe. It's, <laughs> it's a blue and white stripe, like a maxi, um, maxi stripe. So I got significant amounts of each of these because I want to actually be able to do something with them. I, I, I want to be able to make like a couple of long sleeve shirts, long sleeve dresses, things that I can wear in this sort of mid season that I think lasts quite a bit of time where I am in Spain. Um, this is a good weight. It's a good mid weight um, fabric and it's yarn dyed, of course. Um, and I think, yeah, I'll write down below or I'll, I'll, I'll put down here what the blend is. I don't remember what the blend is. Um, it might be hemp. I feel like it might be hemp. I don't know. Anyway, the point is it's beautiful and natural and lovely and I'm gonna make something awesome from this. And then, this is a little out of the box for me. I got orange. I got this orange fabric. And again, I'll write below what the blend is because I don't remember these things off the top of my head. Um, not generally something I buy, but I do think it's probably a good color for me. And yeah, I thought, let's do something a little different. Just feeling it, it's really soft. Like this is something I think definitely I think probably a shirt. I think this would make a really lovely shirt, but I will link below um, one of the things that Michelle made out of this. I think she made a, um, yeah, she made a beautiful blouse. Oh, with like gathers here and a little collar. I think it was sleeveless. Yeah, so pretty. And then lastly, I got a whack. I think I got three meters of this gray linen blend. I can't remember, right? Um, I got a whack of this because I think I want to do, I think I want to do a jumpsuit or a long dress, long sleeve, long dress. Um, so this is kind of a very much, you know, you can wear it in the summer if it was sleeveless, but I think with sleeves, it's absolutely heavy enough that I can wear it, you know, through, through the winter. Um, you know, if I, if I wear a sweater or whatever, you know, it might not be in January, but, but I think for a good amount of time I can use this. So, so yeah, so that's what I got. And they're all three so beautiful, plus my prezzies. Um, yeah, pretty. Things that make me happy. Things that make me happy. Oh, and then the last thing I got, <laughs> much less expensive, was this little bowl at just at a local, you know, um, discount store um, as a yarn bowl. And it fits my yarn perfectly. And so I put it on the floor while I'm knitting and it keeps my yarn from rolling around. And uh, yeah, so that's great. And in October, I'm gonna start a pottery class. So I'm really excited about that. I feel like it's really creative, something I've always wanted to do. And yeah, I'm really psyched to start the pottery class. All right, that's all for me today. Um, maybe I'll put in a little bit of video from the Festa that just passed this weekend. So it was the Festa of Santa Tecla and there were lots of kids out, well, there were a lot of adults out one night. I'll put both in. <laughs> there were adults out one night lighting off firecrackers in the middle of town, half a block from where we are. Um, that was insane. And like, I was literally had to jump out of the way of a firecracker at some point, health and safety. <laughs> Yeah, that would not happen in Toronto, um, but I love that we're right in the thick of it here and getting to enjoy it. And then on the Sunday morning, the kids did a parade and it was so very sweet and they all were dressed up and they were, um, you know, they made floats in their schools and so all the schools came by and the parents were there and uh, there was a band and it was like a Sunday morning. We literally walked out with our coffee half a block up the street and watched this adorable parade. So we are really loving living in Spain and we're trying to really soak it all in. And yeah, so I'm just gonna keep doing that. So let me put in some video of that and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.